What's going on guys? Do you want to save time and money while you're doing your Amazon FBA? Do you want to do it as efficiently as possible? If the answer is yes, this video is for you guys because I'm going to share three hacks with you guys that is going to absolutely help you guys be efficient, save you time and of course save you money when it comes to it because these are some of the things that are really important when we are launching our product, when we're actually doing the business overall. So the three hacks that I'm going to talk about, one is a product listing hack one is a supplier hack and one of course is a product research hack because these are some of the most important things when we deal with Amazon FBA. So let's get started. Now the first one is a product research hack. That's where our whole business starts and product research. We want to find the most profitable product. So what are some of the most important things that we should be considering when we are searching for products? Because I know there are millions of products out there and you want to make sure you have something that is in a niche that is uh, marketable in the market you're selling, that has a good price, that has a good profitability, and has a good return on your investment overall. So some of the things that we look at is Remember guys, I showed you guys the Helium 10, the Chrome extension, and we're actually on Amazon FBA page. You run this Chrome extension and you see on page one what items are there. It's specifically in a specific category that you're searching for. It shows you the data, which is your price. It shows you data on the number of reviews. It shows you um, everything about those products on page one. Now, some of the most important things are actually on top of the strip, and I'm gonna put a screenshot of that for you guys uh, so you know what I'm talking about. Now, it's right here on the screen, so take a look. So the top numbers, which are the average numbers, what does that tell us? That tells us if there is a viable market for the specific product we're trying to sell, right? So the average numbers, and specifically two of them, are very, very important. First one is your price. If that product is selling, let's say, for $10, right? Obviously, you know that's not going to be profitable. Why? Because you have to consider that there is going to be Amazon FBA fees. In the Chrome extension of Helium 10 tells you that how much FBA fees will be allocated to that product. I guarantee you guys it's going to be over $5. And then you have to consider your manufacturing cost, guys, which could be another dollar or two. And then, of course, you're shipping to an Amazon FBA warehouse. Now, if you consider all of this, you're probably left with 5 to 10% margin. And that's even not even considering your PPC campaigns and the money you spend on advertising, right? So overall, you're breaking even with no margin. What are you really doing it for? My, uh, my point is to save you guys time and really when you're assessing products to actually figure out what is a viable product. Now, I always tell you guys, if there is a product you wanna sell, make sure it's between 20 to $30. Why that range? The range is for a reason. Anything over $30, people are a little more hesitant to buy on Amazon. I mean, there are some products that you wanna get that's a higher ticket price, but Anything below 20 is not going to make you any money. What you want to do is find a product that will give you at least 50% margin. Like I talked about the, my previous product that it's going to take up $10 of your selling price towards the FBA fees, towards um, the shipping and manufacturing costs, right? So you're left with 50%, which is an additional $10, and that's what we want, guys. We want a good profit margin. The other thing you want to look at, guys, which is very, very important, how much on average this product is doing, that's your entire page one. How much on average this product is selling on a monthly basis. Now you guys know that anything that is about three to four grand, right, it's not really worth it. Why? Because if we consider that 50% of that is profit margin, you're selling a product, you're selling three grand worth of products um, uh, over a month, that means you're only making $1,500 for yourself. That is not what we want to do. You want to get into a product that at least on average generating $5,000 and higher in sales, which means that you're going to get $2,500 with your first product. And if you had two or three products to the category, you guys do the math. Now all of a sudden you're making five grand, seven and a half, ten grand with four products. You're making ten grand profit a month. That's when it makes it worth it, guys. And that's basically a hundred, $120,000 salary 
if you're working anywhere else and it's so much easier to get to so that's the first hack guys the price of the product make sure it's above 20 uh, and between 30 20 and 30 and also the average sales which has to be over five grand the higher the better but over five grand minimum guys. the second one is a supplier hack now I have run into this issue I know people who have run into this issue now when you are buying product from a supplier overseas that you haven't met, you just talk to FaceTime, what have you, right? There's a little bit of trust factor that is still not there yet. So what you want to do is before they send your product, you want them to open that box. So now this is your sample that they're sending. Make sure they take a picture of it and send it to you. Why is that important? The product takes, let's say if they do the air freight, they'll be here in, in a week or whatever. But if you do ocean freight, it could take you 30 days, right? The time the product gets here, by the time the product gets here, and if it is not the product that you want or you bought from him and he sent you a completely different thing, you have lost a full month's worth of sales, guys. So you always, always want to make sure you do the diligence when you are dealing with suppliers because these are Chinese guys that, you know, like, I mean, there's a lot of fraud around the world. So you want to make sure that you get what you ask for and what you pay for. Now, a lot of times you will be paying for that sample as well. So it's a waste of money. It's a waste of your time. You really want to launch your product, but you can't because the whole supply now, you thought there was a product that you're really excited about. It turned out that the supplier is not giving you the quality or the type of product that you actually saw in the pictures. So that's why it is very, very, very important guys to take pictures get him to take pictures, send it to you before they send you the sample shipment because that's how you're gonna eliminate that. And if you can afford, you can always get somebody to go check it. You pay their companies that go and do quality check for you guys, but for a sample, it's not worth it. Just get them to send you pictures and they're obligated to do so guys, like, cause you're buying this product from them. So make sure that you always, always, always Get pictures before your sample gets here because that is going to save you guys at least a month of time and of course a lot of money in sales that you could have done during that month. And the last one is your listing hack. What do I mean by that? So specifically with reviews, a lot of people what they do is, you know you can review, leave reviews for your friends, whoever is selling right without having to buy that product. Those are called unverified reviews. They're okay, but when you're actually launching your product, to make sure you don't get tagged by Amazon's algorithm as somebody who is fraudulently put reviews, make sure that you have a good mix of unverified and verified reviews. Now, unverified reviews are reviews that people don't have to buy your product, they look at it and then they actually leave you a review, which is great, right? That just gives you a little bit of momentum. But make sure at least half of the initial reviews that you're getting are verified, which means somebody actually physically went and purchased your product from the website and left the review after they received the product. Reason is because we want to create social proof and legitimacy, right? If somebody goes to your website and they are all unverified reviews, all of a sudden people are going to think, okay, maybe this guy is full of shit. It's the product is not quality. And he has basically gotten a bunch of his friends to leave him reviews. We do not want to be tagged like that. So you always, always, always want to make sure that you, when you're actually contacting people to leave your reviews, get them to buy the product. And then of course you can refund them, right? But make sure you guys get the more and uh, the more verified reviews you guys get, the better it is. Now, if you can get all of your reviews as verified, even better guys i mean it's always good so if you can get 10 verified reviews perfect and then throw in a couple unverified reviews in there just to increase the number of reviews right but make sure guys verified reviews are the backbone of amazon's algorithm and basically detecting that your product is legit and they should be pushing your product so make sure that verified reviews are the core of when you're trying to get reviews and unverified reviews are more of them back end or more of like a backdrop um, to those to those numbers because you always always want to make sure legitimacy and you want to create good good social proof so those are the three most important things that I think every Amazon seller should really consider when they're trying to sell on Amazon so first we went over our product uh, product uh, hack which was basically having a high price at least between 20 to 30 dollars to create a 50% profit margin for us 
We went over the average sales that you can do over a month. Make sure it's above 5K because that will determine how much money you will make, which will be basically 50% again. Anything below that is not going to be worth it. It's going to eat through a lot of your profits. So you got to consider the shipping. You got to consider the, um, uh, sub, uh, sorry, the manufacturing costs. You got to consider the inventory costs and your PPC campaign costs, guys. So always always make sure you consider that and then price your product accordingly the second thing was a supplier hack again guys you always want to get them to send you pictures proof of the samples they're sending you so you know it's a legit product the quality is what you asked for and what you actually agreed upon and the third and last one is your listing hack which is again your verified reviews versus your unverified reviews make sure you have more verified reviews versus unverified reviews to create social proof and create legitimacy to your business. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your viewership. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so you can receive notification on the next video. I'm excited for the new videos that I'm gonna be doing because I'm gonna get into the details, nitty gritty stuff for you guys to save you time and money. Thanks again guys, have a good one, bye.